Summer has come to an end, the school year started back up, and we've made it all the way to the month of September. That means it's time to look back at the month of August and rank all five August new releases that I saw from the worst to the best. Hi, my name is Sean, and I love to talk about movies and TV way too much. With that in mind, go ahead and join me down below in the comment section. Share your ranking of all the August 2022 movies that you saw from the worst to the best. And if I missed a movie that you think I would have liked, let me know about it down below in the comment section. Now, August is normally a pretty slow month for movies, and this August was no different. There wasn't a ton of big, exciting releases this month, and just a lot of kind of smaller things, even ones that, you know... I heard about but barely even saw a trailer for so maybe I missed something that you think I would like let me know about it down below and let's get started unfortunately in last place is Samaritan now this is a movie that I'd actually been very excited for for several years for a number of reasons first off it's a superhero story not based off a DC or Marvel character uh, it has been adapted into a comic book, for, but from an independent creator, not Marvel or DC. So not someone I'm familiar with, a fresh new superhero story. Second one, stars Sylvester Stallone, my favorite actor. Him as a retired superhero sounds awesome to me. Third, it's from the director of Overlord, a Nazi zombie movie that came out a few years back that I thought was very cool. Combine those all together and you have my attention. And it's had my attention for several years in COVID and a studio merger and a bunch of other stuff, delayed its release for a long time. It's finally dropped on Amazon Prime and unfortunately, it's a movie that has better ideas than execution. It's central kind of conflict between Samaritan and his nemesis, aptly titled Nemesis, actually has some interesting dynamics of how they the city perceives of them and takes different sides as to who the real hero and villain is. All of that's very interesting. And it kind of feels like a real city with crime and poverty. It doesn't feel like a slick, big blockbuster city. Like it feels gritty and real. Loved all of that. But they decided to treat the movies kind of central idea as a mystery to be solved rather than a character to be studied. And I think that was the wrong direction to go because it meant that it all a bunch all the interesting ideas in the film aren't explored. They're they're used as a mystery out there that we're trying to figure out. Like what is it? What's got really going on here? And I think it would have worked better as a character study. Reveal everything that is revealed by the end of the movie earlier in the film and let us play out those ideas longer, study the character, what makes them tick, why are they doing what they're doing. Instead, it was a, it was a mystery that I felt was very predictable. I thought it was very obvious very early in the film exactly where this whole thing was headed. And other things about it, it felt pretty tv it felt like a streaming movie. It felt like a pilot for a TV show. It didn't feel big and cinematic. And so overall, not not terrible, but very underwhelming, very underdeveloped. Number four, Bullet Train. Now for me, this was a fun enough, star-studded, crime, rated R action movie that always kind of felt a bit like it was trying too hard to be clever, fun, and stylish. The movie feels an awful lot like if Guy Ritchie in the year 2000 made a movie about criminal underworld on a train in the year 2022. That's what it feels like. His, both the visual style, storytelling style, just even the casting of Brad Pitt in the movie is very similar to what he did in Lock, Stock, and Two Smoking Barrels, as well as Snatch, except it's a very violent action movie on a train in the year 2022. And um, there's so many things about this movie that make me want to be able to put it higher up on this list because I, I did enjoy it. The, the cast carries a lot of weight here. You know, obviously Brad Pitt's a ton of fun to see in anything where he gets to have fun. But really, the, the, the twins in it, the two brothers in it, they kind of steal a lot of scenes that they're in the amazing chemistry and what they're able to do. Everyone really does a good job, and they're very fun characters to play. Everyone has a big personality, some quirk about them. So letting movie stars be charismatic criminals, there's just a lot of potential and opportunity in that. And that's what this movie delivers quite a bit of. kind of lost me a little bit is that it just gets 
so convoluted, so like like there's a in the third act of this movie, there's literally a part where it pauses to give the origin story for a, a bottle of water. Which is kind of amusing, but it's also like, guys, you're trying way, way, way too hard to sell your quirky, hyperactive style here. When you're given the origin story for the bottle of water that's about to be thrown. And that's what that's like the epitome of what was kind of fun and wrong about this movie. Is that it just goes for it, even with the water bottle. So... Fun, fun time. If I needed to rewatch it, I wouldn't. It wouldn't be a negative thing. It's also not a movie I'm rushing to rewatch or anything like that. In third place, Secret Headquarters. This is a Paramount Plus original film about a boy whose father is never there. He's always too busy, and then one day he discovers a secret headquarters in his father's basement and discovers his dad has been doing some very interesting thing in, things in his free time. The dad uh, is played by Owen Wilson, and it kind of turns into a scenario that's kind of like Die Hard in the secret headquarters with a group of kids using all of the superhero gear that's in the base trying to escape and survive uh, before bad guys are able to get a hold of it. And it's a pretty kind of classic family kids movie formula about... Kids discover something, a secret about their parents. It's spy kids did things like that. <laughs> For adult movies, True Lies did that sort of plot line before. Um, it's a pretty tried and true formula with a superhero twist to it that kind of fits in the current landscape of the types of movies that people are into. And it kind of explores the idea of what if you discovered that your dad was a superhero? How would that kind of play out? And had some fun with it. Yeah, this isn't like amazing cinema, but... Is it good family entertainment? Yeah, I, I was amused by it. Like, I wasn't, like, checking my phone the whole time. My kids seem invest invested enough in it. There's just enough jokes in there that land well enough that it's a solid little film to put on and enjoy as the in for, with your entire family. You also have Michael Pena in there in one of the roles. And then the, the girl in it is played by uh, Reese Witherspoon's niece. Like it said in the opening credits, Witherspoon. I was like, that's a distinct enough name I bet she's in some way related to Reese, and then looked it up, and it's Reese Witherspoon's niece. And the actual star of it, the son, is the boy from Project Adam from a few months back that played younger Ryan Reynolds. So I, I had fun with it. A solid little piece of family entertainment. It's not breaking any new ground. It's just doing a modern spin on a familiar type of template for family entertainment. And it does a good enough job at it. Our runner-up is Beast. This is a very straightforward survival film where Idris Elba takes his two daughters out to South Africa and while they're kind of exploring the wilderness, they find themselves trapped there with a vicious lion trying to kill them. It's a movie entirely designed to just kind of immerse you in this situation, put you on the edge of your seat for about 90 minutes, and then the credits roll. And I think it does a good enough job at that. It's shot in a way that some people were frustrated by it. I saw some criticisms and some reviews of the amateurish camera work. I kind of perceived of it differently. There's a lot of long shots that are handheld where you just kind of follow the characters into an environment. There's a lot of times where the lion jumps at their vehicle, and it's just someone in there and you're just seeing it shake a little bit because it's like you're in the vehicle as this lion is reaching for them. Other times you're underneath the vehicle and you're just kind of looking up as the lion is reaching at you and it's designed to be immersive, make you feel like you're a part of it, not do a bunch of flashy Hollywood tricks in editing. So long shots where you're just there hoping you don't get injured. So a lot of things like that I just enjoyed. In general, I like survival films with straightforward plot lines like this. The big negative, this isn't a great movie of this genre. Big problem here is that it's just filled with every dumb character cliche that these movies tend to have, where turns to his daughters, don't get out of the car, and then 30 seconds they get out of the car. And then, like, let's split up. I'll go off alone. You know exactly what's about to happen when someone does that. There's just all of these different moments where they, they do the stupid thing. And the actual final bit 
where the final showdown in it, with, if you haven't seen it, I don't want to say too much, with Idris Elba and the lion, uh, the actual concept of it is set up properly of, of how it plays out, out. The execution, there's literally part of it where it just like cuts from one location to the next. And <laughs> you're watching the movie and be like, how did he outrun a lion from here to there, though? That's the that's kind of an important question. How did he actually get there? So there's a number of those things in it. But in general, I had fun with it. It it did its job of getting me on the edge of my seat, delivering the thrills. All three of these in the middle are kind of like uh, uh, just enjoyable enough B-type films of, depending on the mood, if I want my kids, it'll be Secret Headquarters. If I want an edge to seat thriller, Beast, if I'm in the mood for wild, stylized action, it'll be Bullet Train. They're all kind of right there close to each other. Um, the ranking could change any day of the week, I imagine. But easily, without question, in first place is going to be Prey, the Predator prequel that delivers a fresh new take on the series by setting it way in the past. It's able to have the Predator experience of a new group of people experiencing the Predator and trying to figure out how the Predator works and trying to figure out how do you defeat this creature? What is this creature? Without just rehashing the vibe of the original film. Like, I like the movie Predators, but it's a bit of a rehash of the original film Predator. This one delivers the thrills without doing that. And we're in a new environment, new set of characters, new technology. It's not a bunch of dudes with machine guns or girls with machine guns. This is people with tomahawks trying to set traps and muskets. So it just gives it a very different energy. Even the Predator has different tech. And it's a simple, straightforward plot line that just puts you in on this adventure trying to track down the Predator. And it finds new ways to be kind of subversive with your expectations of how a Predator movie plays out, what the Predator movie will per perceive of each of these characters. And it uses, the, the, the girl in the story uses that to her advantage of the way the Predator works. She starts to figure out how it's doing things, how it's perceiving things, and uses that as part of the mechanism to overcome the Predator. And that's what all of the Predator movies have done. It's never... Uh, Dutch Arnold Schwarzenegger in the original one didn't defeat the Predator because he could beat the Predator in an arm wrestling match and because he looked like a former Mr. Universe bodybuilder. No, Dutch beat the Predator because he was smart and witty and figured out how the Predator worked and outsmarted the Predator. And that's what this movie does. It has a character that's watching, learning throughout the entire film. She's not out there on her own. Other people are involved. Other people are involved in the ones that are actually injuring the Predator all along the way. So it's not at full capacity when you move into the final section. And that's what sets her up for success in the story. So I thought it was a great continuation. I think this is a template for how to bring back a lot of these 80s sci-fi action franchises that I love. Don't try and do the big blockbuster version of it that needs to make 500 million, a billion dollars. Do something like this. It's much lower budget. That's a clever spin on the franchise rather than just trying to out blockbuster the last one. So easily, without question, no competition. It comes in at number one. Let me know what movies you saw in the month of August down below in the comment section. If I missed something you think that I would enjoy, let me know about it down below. Thank you so much for watching and keep talking movies and TV too much. Bye-bye.